Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and you are in like part three, but part six, video six, and part three of the whole cloth series, and we are getting ready to actually stitch out the lotus flower quilt. Now, um, this is not a whole cloth, but it could be done as a whole cloth, which I talked to you about in the last video, just like we did the um, second quilt the uh, Versailles quilt. So the first quilt we did was the Midas, the second one was Versailles, and now we're on to the Lotus Flower. Um, this design was actually created to work with one of the Judy, Niem Judy Niemeyer patterns called Lotus Flower. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. In our last episode, recap, rewind. Um, in that last episode, I went in, we loaded it, stitched the ditch, and I showed you how I stitched the ditch. Uh, most of it, I was using the skinny ruler, the HQ skinny ruler. Um, I didn't use the Versatool. I used the Versatool to stitch down my sides, but you know that because you watch basting and how I base my quilts. Um, I use the Curvy, the HQ Curvy. I use the HQ um, Oval D1. This is the 10 by five. Um, so I just found the curve that was gonna work the best with my curves that I had in here. And like I said in the last video, I stitch next to the ditch because I'm really bad about hitting it. This is my stitch next to the ditch quilt. Um, but that's how I do all my quilts. I don't have a problem with that. They're my quilts. They look good. So be it. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be using Pro Stitcher. Um, I was going to clean this up because I was like, Ooh, let's start fresh. But I want you to see, this is the chaos. This is the chaos that I work with. I have all my bobbins, the bobbins that I'm using. I have my bobbin box. Um, we're using bottom line. So I have my purple bobbins because the purple bottoms hold the bottom line. Um, I have my thread, my different thread colors, and then I have two more um, cones of thread on the machine because I have the purple, and I just left it up there because I'm going to use it again, and then I have the darker orange, I think. Um, today we're going to start with the red, so whenever we bring you over here, I'm going to have already changed that. We're starting with, um, this is 3141 Deep Red. Um, and remember, this video is being sponsored by Quiltable. Thank you, Quiltable, because they gave me the pattern. I made the quilt, but they gave me the stitch pattern. Um, so I can show it off and show all you. And then um, thank you so much to Connecting Threads for supplying me some gorgeous, gorgeous color wheel solids in, do I remember what those colors were? Did I write it down? In Blackberry, Honeysuckle, Lemon Chiffon, Persimmon, Orange, Merlot, and Barn Red. So um, again, all that stuff is linked below. I always got you the links, okay? Get you the links. Um, if you like this, like I said, I love these solids. They are just buttery soft. Um, so I will link them below. I do have an affiliate link with them. So I'll put that affiliate link below with the colors and then you can go and shop and yay. Um, anything else that I need to say? I I probably do. I It's been a really whirlwind week. I did not get this done. I was going to try to get three quilts in two days done. I didn't, it didn't happen, but two quil three quilts in two and a half days. How about that? It's kind of two days because I kind of started, I don't know, whatever. We're going to bring you over. We're going to get started. But before that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop and you get to learn all the new techniques, even though they're not new, but they're new to you. So all the new techniques. Um, and follow me on Facebook, Adam So Fun with an S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram, where you see all of the other stuff that doesn't hit this channel. So if you are on Facebook or Instagram or both, you've already seen this quilt. It's been done. It's been done for six weeks. I just needed to wait six weeks for the video to come out. So um, yeah, make sure you follow me over there. We do a lot of fun stuff, uh, Tuesday Zooms, and just that's where we're laughing when we're not here on Fridays. So we'll see you at the quilt. All right, so here we are at um, our machine. We're at our Pro Stitcher. We have our quilt top. It is um, ready to start quilting. I um, centered this yesterday. I'm gonna start with this red star. Um, and then I will do I might be able to, let's see, I can't do that, that, um, my machine's hitting the back bar, so I can't do this one and that one, so that means I can do anything under this, so I can do my, um, red star, I'm gonna do my, um, two petals, my orange petals here, I'll do my orange petals on the other side, I will do the, um, the yellow pieces here, and I think here, if I can make it work... I will also do this yellow piece and that yellow piece because I can get down far enough. I was trying not to hit the um, camera mic. 
Um, and then I'm not going to do the purple. I'm going to do all the purple at once. So I'll come back and do that. I don't have to worry about not doing it now. Um, everything is ditch stitched. So because I have this, this stitched and these ditch stitched, everything's going to stay in place. So I don't have to do this purple yet. I can come back and do it and still be okay. But um, So let's get this flower done and then we'll start setting up the purple. So we're starting with the red. And this design, let me turn you back up. This might actually be a three-parter. Um, this design, so I need to file design open and I want the lotus flower, so I'm in my files that I brought in. Um, this uses piece one and piece three. So it's gonna use the, um, the center medallion and the zigzag. So I'm gonna open the medallion and I'm gonna open the zigzag. And you'll notice, um, I talked about this in the Versailles pattern. Sometimes when you buy a pattern, this is how you get it. You get all your elements and then you have to go in and put them where they where they uh, where they supposed to live where they go. I'll pop a um, I'll pop a photo up here of what it's going to look like when it's stitched, and then you follow the directions. And the directions say this is piece one in the center. You're not you can't see what I'm pointing at, so I'm going to point tilt you down. So the center is piece one, which is a circle. And then piece three is a zigzag that works out into these spikes. Piece two are going to be these big flower pieces. Piece four is going to be the um, yellow pieces. And so one, two, three, and four will take care of all of my center flower of the lotus flower itself. And then um, six and seven, or seven is going to be some the big corner unit here. Um, six takes care of, uh, let's see, is it five and six, eight and six. Now I'm going to have to look at it, but, um, it'll take in, uh, will one of them will do the corner. One of them is this cutoff piece here. And this, this design, how it's made makes kind of a secondary design in the um, negative space. So I'm super excited to see what that does. Um, like I said, we're going to be chunking the border. So if I look over here, I have my center seam. Um, I'm lucky enough that my throat, I think I can fit from the center seam up and be able to line everything up pretty easy. But um, it's one does it's, one design in the border but on each border side it, there's four so there's going to be like one two three four and i'm going to be able to set those up so basically i'm chunking because i'm going to do it piece by piece they did a corner unit in the corners to help us out and let make sure we get really nice corners there so um we'll just work our way through it so i think maybe this first video will be the flower itself and then we'll do uh, one more doing this outside border because there's different pieces that go in different sections so let's go off i have my red done so my first step is i need to create my area i want to create an area around this so i know where to place things so if i go up to my screen i'm going to cancel out of that i have my two designs i want to go to my area tab and we're using the multi-point I'm, there's a diamond here, so I'm going to use the diamond on my handlebar. And I'm going to create the area, and I like to do this kind of just inside, basically where I stitched. Because if I do it where I stitched, sometimes I pop another, uh, another one. It depends on how accurate what you want to be. We're not skewing, but we don't want to stitch outside the color. It's hard not doing this standing right in front of the machine with two hands. I'm a much better driver with two hands. And I'm just working my way around. You'll notice that um, if you've watched any of the Dream Big videos, I don't want to hit the camera. Sorry. Um, if you've watched any of the Dream Big videos, I kind of haphazardly do this. I think my face might have just been in it. Um, I haphazardly make my area. This is not a Dream Big. I am not going to do anything haphazard. 
I am going to make this area very precise. So now I've done my star, let's go back up to the screen. And here's my star unit and here are my pieces. The first thing, we're gonna start with that circle and we know where the center of this design is. I don't know if you can tell, but the center of the design is right here where I have perfect points. Thank you very much. So I'm gonna move my crosshairs there. There is a ton of bulk right here because there's eight pieces of fabric coming in. So I might push it down a little bit and I'm gonna stick my laser light right there. Come back to the top, pick my design, add my select tool on, pick my circle, modify, reposition in the ribbon center. Now, if we zoom in on this, we can see that this design is gonna be a little bit too big for this. So, we're just gonna to go to resize, make sure our lock is on, turn my lock on, and I'm going to fit it in there so it all fits really good. Let me see, see it's cutting off there a little bit. I could shift it because it's here. It wouldn't be quite centered, but I think if I shift it to the right just a tad, Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know. I think it still didn't work. We're going to have to shrink it one more. And this is, I mean, we're custom quilting right now. So if you have to shrink and move some things around and stuff, that's what, I mean, that's what this is all about. This is, this is when you get paid the big bucks. There we are. Um, Perfect. Good, good. Now, I am going to um, pick my next piece. So, the, oops, I'm still on zoom. Select. All right, so this piece is gonna go here. And we're gonna fit that in. Well, I need eight of them. So when I open it up, I'm gonna hit edit, and I'm gonna duplicate this. Um, we can duplicate it now, or we can duplicate it after we set it up. Let's set it up first and then duplicate it. Again, we're still gonna have to um, kind of work this out a little bit to fit perfect. But if we fit one, as long as you don't start rotating it and doing it a ton of stuff. If, if you're doing a ton of stuff to it, I would start fresh with the, each one. But this one, I think we just have to shrink a little bit. So I'm gonna set modify, resize. I, my lock is on, very important because you wanna keep that aspect ratio of the, uh, of the design and shrink it. And then now I can use my drag, drag and drop and just shift it over a little bit. I'm gonna zoom down here. Oh, these are just uh, tiny movements. All right, let's see what that looks like. I hit drop, zoom. I like that. Now, can we rotate that a little bit? Yes, we can, but it, before we do that, I want to open my other seven. So I'm going to, I have it selected and I'm going to edit and I'm going to duplicate this six or seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they all duplicated right there, which is great. So I'm going to go to my workspace tab. There's a lot there and I don't want to move something on accident. So I have my first one and I'm going to drag and drop it. I'll pick my next one and I'm going to drag and drop it. And then I'll pick, actually, I'm going to, just because I know how this is going to line up, I'm going to go backwards. And it's just because I want to stitch out in the order that I want. All right, so we have all of our pieces. Now we have to rotate them. The nice thing about this, although this one um, is not straight, sitting straight up and down, to get all of these in the right position, it's just gonna be a matter of selecting the design. So we have the sec second one, and I wanna go to rotate in my ribbon, and I'm gonna rotate this 45 degrees to the right, and it's gonna be correct. Go to my next one, I'm gonna hit this twice. The next one's three times. The next one is four times. I'm not gonna use flip, I'm gonna use rotate because um, I want to keep these, keep that solid line on the same on the same side as on all of them. So that line is always going to be kind of on the left, depending on where you're looking for, for it. So now it's just a matter of zooming in. I always like to kind of drag and drop them first. 
and I can maybe drag and drop this one. I drag and drop them to get them close. Or I'm using my finger, sorry. I'm using my finger to drag and drop. I'm being really careful that I make sure I get the design and nothing else. And then I can go back and everything's somewhat where it's supposed to be. So let's select my first one. I'm gonna to try to zoom in as close to just this one as I can get. I'm on rotate and I have this little custom rotation and I will rotate it a little bit and then I can hit drag, shift it over. This is gonna be such small movements, we're gonna use the nudge and nudge it. I'm inside the lines, so piece one is good. I'm gonna select piece two and get it where I need it using my nudges. That one, I don't even have to rotate and that one looks good. So let's go down to our third one. And so I'm just gonna work my way around. This one looks like we need to rotate it. So we'll rotate it. Go back to reposition. And we might need to shrink it one more time. So I'm gonna go to resize. My lock is still on. And it's just, it's different for every quilt because it just depends on how it was pieced. There we are. And you'll see, you know, these are now, they're different sizes, but in the final quilt, you're not gonna be able to tell any of that. Because you're gonna be too busy ooing and eyeing, saying, oh my gosh, you win awards. So you'll see, I just resized this one again, or um, two. That looks good. It looks like it's going out just a little bit. Now, so I have this going out just a little bit. You can, I'm gonna turn you. I think I can just turn you this way. I'm gonna move my laser light to where that's overhanging and stick my laser right on that overhang. And if I look down at my quilt top, I can actually see where it is. And it is going into that yellow color just a tad. So I'm gonna move it. So I shifted it, oh, you didn't see this. I um, I hit the bottom arrow to shift it down a little bit, but, oh no, that left this row, okay. Yay, that works, oops. So that's why I'm looking, that's why we're making that um, area first. We're making that area to get, um, to be able to have precise kind of measurements and such. So here we are, obviously that is not the same angle, so we'll go to rotate. And you might be thinking, well, this, this, this design wasn't digitized correctly or this and that. That's not the case. These, um, it's piecing and it's, there's curved piecing. It's all about like how it was pieced, um, how you press. Do you, did you press that seam the correct way? How big is your seam allowance? How, you know, all of those things come to come into account when you start doing this stuff. Um, so these quilts do take a little more time, but the payoff, to me, the payoff is there. I love the way they look when they're done. Uh, we're gonna have to shrink this one down and reposition. There we go. We might be able to rotate it. And come, there we go. Two more and then we get to stitch this baby out. I'm gonna try to rotate because we're kind of going over there. Oh, perfect. I know one of our community members is currently working on basically doing this on a really fancy um, Judy Niemeyer pattern that I've quilted out basically doing this and um, they just turn out so great. So there's our center design. And that took all of, um, I've been recording for 15 minutes.
So 15 minutes to set that up. Not a total 15 minutes because I was talking half of it. Um, so now we're going to stitch this all out. I can come down here and hit select all and it's going to select everything on the screen. And the next thing I'm going to come over here to my sidebar. Here's my group. Um, I'm in workspace tab on my sidebar. So in my sidebar tabs, um, it's going to do the center. And I am going to do the center first and I'll show you why. Um, this has a very puffy center because there's no stitching here. These things are all kind of set in stone because they, they're, they're ditch stitched. But I don't want any of this to start moving, so we're going to stitch the center first and then we'll just jump around and stitch those um, pieces on the outside. So we have our center, or um, the center piece, and then we have starting at the, we'll say 11 o'clock. 1 o'clock, and because I laid these out at the beginning, they're going to be laid out in the um, correct order, so I'm not going to have to reorder them, which is lovely. So we're ready to stitch. I'm going to go to Pro Stitcher, and I'm going to move you over and stitch this out. All right, so the center part is done. I want to say that I am loving the way it looks. This stitched out so nice. And although I shifted it over, you can't tell that it's not centered. Everything looks, it still looks very centered right here. And I like that they left this center hole here. I didn't even tell them that, but um, as, especially in her patterns, there tends to be eight six or eight fabrics that meet up here. So this is very bulky and some of them will stitch through it and stitch it down. I like that it left it and it's still, it's gonna leave it a little puffy. So I, I'm digging it. So red is done. We are done with that red color for the rest of the time. I'm gonna switch to yellow. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, we're back. Red is done. Everything on the screen we no longer need. So I'm gonna go file, clear all. Cause we're jumping into yellow. Now I'm gonna tilt you down and let's talk about this yellow. Um, I have these eight pieces. And sometimes when I do these quilts, when they're bigger, um, if I have, like, let's say I have a lot of yellow throughout my quilt, I might go and stitch all of the yellow pieces only, and that is only if I have basted down and stitched the ditch. Because once you've stitched the ditch, things are going to stay in place for the most part. Um, in this case, I could go up and do these yellow pieces. I'm not, I'm just gonna do the four here so we can also do those orange. And we'll probably just set up this set and then I'll finish the rest off camera and then we'll come back and do the purple. Um, just because I know these videos 
start to get really long because I have to edit them. And if they are edited at 45 minutes, they were probably really an hour and 10 minutes. Um, so let's go in and we're going to do these four yellow pieces. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do these. I'm, I'm going to create an area. So I'm on my area tab on my pro stitcher and I'm going to scoot you back so you can kind of see this. Um, this is just the kind of technique that I use. It's the way I like to do it. I'm going to move you right here while I make this area just so I can get to the machine better. And um, so we have these four areas. I'm pretty sure I can get to them all. Yes. And I'm going to create the area around all four at the same time. Because, because we're not skewing, because we're only using it for placement on our screen, I can do that and not have any issues. Um, also, remember, this inner piece is curved. These outer pieces are straight, but anywhere it touches the leaf, leaf is a slight curve. So I'm not going to do a point here and a point here. I'm going to do a point, 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 and maybe four. So um, I'm going to start here, and I'll show you how I do this, and then you'll be able to see it on the screen what it looks like. I'll make my point. Ding, 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 ding. So now, if we look at the screen, I have my one diamond, but how I'm gonna, how I do this and how I create this, oops, there we go. Um, how I do this and create it, we're going to have all four whenever I'm done. So I'm going to come to this point. I'm not, I've, I just dinged my clothes and you have to ding your clothes when you do it this way. So I've dinged all the way, start, I started and stopped in the same place. Now I'm going to move here and just start again. Ding, ding. And you're probably thinking, well, that's not going to work. And I promise you it does. And I started and stopped in the same place. I have to turn the lights on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. It's just, I, I'm having trouble seeing and I want to be able to see this. So now I started and stopped, came over here, started again, stopped. I'm coming to my third one. Ding. Uh oh, I'm not in area anymore because I hit a button. There we are. Ding, 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 ding. And remember, the gears are up the whole, or uh, gears are engaged, my crosshairs are orange. You have to have your crosshairs orange for this to work. Um, started and stopped, come to my last one. started and stopped, came to my last one. If I wanted to, I can come back to this last and put one last point there. I don't need to, not in this case, because it's going to close it. It's going to connect this point to my start point, and all of that is obsolete. So let me show you through the magic of, um, look what Adam did, my area. So see how, because I went around and went around each one before I went to the next one. They're all perfect placement and we have all of those areas intact. So now I'm gonna go file design open. We're going to pick this piece, which is the Lotus Flower um, four diamond. And now it's just a matter of setting it in there. So let's see, modify. These ones actually, the, the one at the top and the one at the bottom are at like, um, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So these ones are still going to rotate the same way. So I'm just going to rotate 45s. And then I can drag and drop. And then we'll come and do our little maneuvering in a second. Or actually, let's do... I can't hit... So here's the, one of the things when I do it this way is that I have to come in and physically move this myself. I If I just did the one, I could align center and see if that would put it in there for me. Because I made all four, if I hit a line center, it's gonna line it to the center of my um, 
my whole area and we don't want that. We just want this one. So I am going to hit my drag and drag and drop it. And that looks good. I mean, I could rotate it a tiny bit because it looks like it's a little bit off axis, but I'm going to drop that. We're not going to rotate it yet because I need to come in edit and I need three more. So edit, duplicate, one, two, three. And I can select, select, select. And I'm going to do what I did just the same time. Uh, it's basically the same process. We're just doing it over in different shapes. We're going to rotate this one and this one needs to be rotated all the way around. And this one to the, um, let's see, there. And this one there. And now I can just start here, drag and drop. And I'm hitting drag, moving my machine, getting my placement. That looks fantastic. Drop, selecting it, hitting drag, moving my machine, getting the placement, drop. Last one, selecting it, hitting drag, moving my machine, getting placement, drop. And I just want to, I want to show you something because I have just, you, I want to show you where I'm working. So see how close to the bar I am? See, like I'm standing up straight. I just placed, I know my hands are getting in the way because I'm trying to hold this. I just placed this diamond this diamond and this diamond from this position. You do not have to be working right at those positions when you do this because once you hit drag, when you move the machine, it's gonna move that design regardless of where your area is or where your design is. So if I hit drag now and I start to move it, this design is gonna move over here. It's not coming to your crosshair. So um, think about that when you're working on something like this, Work close to you. Work where you're standing up, where you're comfortable. Um, like I'm literally, let me see. I'm just going to turn you around. I don't even know what you can see. You probably see a mess. You do. Um, I'm doing everything right here. This is comfortable for me. This is a, a nice, comfortable stance. I'm not reaching over. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, place something back here and hurting my back. I'm standing up straight. Um, sometimes if I'm, if I'm doing a lot, I pull up a chair and I sit up straight. I'm standing up straight, doing everything right here, close to me, staying, um, staying comfortable. That's, that's the big, the big thing. I'm comfortable while I do it. I don't know if you could see my head in that, but that's fine. Um, all right, so we're going back to this first one. All those, all those fit so good. So, um, great job, digitizer. I'm going to look at this one. Great job, Piecer. I think this one needs to be rotated just a tad. Oops, I'm still on Zoom. If you ever are on Zoom and you do this, or it does this and then everything disappears, bottom house. We're going to hit the bottom house refresh, and that will take care of that for us. That was my best friend who always calls at the bad time. Oh, look, that one rotate fixed it for me, and now it looks good. So now I have all four of these ready to stitch. I'm going to hit down here, select all. These are stitching one, two, three, four. I don't know who that was, I didn't look. Let's see, one, two, three, four. I don't like that, I want it to stitch one, two, three, four, so I'm gonna change the stitch out order. So here's my first one. This should be in third, so I'm gonna move it down. Hey, that fixed it. One, two, three, four, yay. And I use the arrows over on my sidebar, so. Um, all right, I'm gonna stitch this, we'll be right back.
All right, so center is done. Yellow is done in this pass. We just have the two oranges. Um, this looks so fancy. This looks so stinking fancy. And I love when it wasn't hard to do. It looks fancy and I didn't have to do anything but piece it and then place the design. So I'm gonna change colors to orange and we'll do the bright orange first and then the dark orange after that. And we'll see you back here in a second. All right, we're back. There's what we have so far. Oh, it looks so good. Um, I have switched to my orange thread. I had to make sure I had the right orange thread. So we're gonna be stitching this one and this one out because that's the lighter orange. These two are using that darker orange color that I have. Um, but we're gonna set all four of them up first and then I can pick to just stitch these two and then change my top thread and then just stitch these two because they are using the same bobbin. So um, let's go up to our screen and hi outside there's this hummingbird that's been flir flirting or flirting uh flying around out in that orange tree and i just i love hummingbirds and i get very mesmerized and forget what i'm doing um all right so we've used this it's done off off with their heads we get to get rid of it so area tab because the first thing we're going to do is create those areas and i'm going to move you again out of the way so i can actually do this and have success for myself and I'm gonna be doing the same thing I did before I'm gonna start here because these two kind of connect and um, I'm gonna do something different in this connection instead of coming down and um, doing one and then doing the other and I'll show you when we get there so I'm gonna start at this I got to turn those lights on I'm sorry um, all right so ding Ding, 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 ding. So now I have to get like close and now I am leaning over. To make sure I can see. You're probably looking at like the back of my head. And I didn't even do my hair today. All right, so I'm getting here to this intersection and the design is gonna fit here. And I, so I want this intersection in here. I have a seam, so I'm just gonna go down that seam and come back up. And then now I can do the next one. This batting is so puffy. And this is so puffy and just looks so good with everything else stitched down. All right, so I'm back. I started, went around everything, came back and stopped. So now these two are good. I'm gonna jump straight across to its buddy on the other side and do the exact same thing over here. The important thing, especially with these spikes in here, because the designs have to go around the spikes, is making sure that you're out far enough out here that you're not right at that corner because you might happen to cut some of that spike off. So I go out just a little bit more because I want to make sure that I'm not going to cut that spike off. I'm back to that same intersection. I'm just working down the row, coming back right back up that seam. Turn my lights off so you can see, and we'll bring you back over here. And 
Now we have our butterfly wings. We have our design. Um, those are closed. If I move my crosshairs, they're closed. So again, just like last time, I'm moving my machine up towards me. I want to be as close to me as I can because I want to be comfortable. Um, file design open. And we want number two. So this one would go here and we aren't doing that one yet. So we're going to go modify and rotate and drop this one here and then edit. We're going to duplicate it three times. One, two, three, rotate these, modify, rotate, make them look like their shape. When I'm teaching Pro Stitcher, I always say, make it look like it's shape before you do anything else. So now let's go in and get these customized. I'm gonna select zoom, drag and drop a box, go back to my select tool, and you can see that this isn't gonna fit. Let me hit drag. I can try to drag and drop it and it's not really gonna fit. Although, no. Um, there's a few things. Shrinking it one might work. But it seems like these bubbles, like it's this bubble. This is what I'm like, what I was talking about that point that we're looking for and the bubbles are out there. So I'm going to go to um, resize. You're a little close, so I'm going to move you back. There we go. So I'm at uh, modify resize and my lock is on and I'm just going to hit minus and shrink it once and see if that works. Maybe rotate it a little bit because it does look like it needs to be rotated a bit. That looks kind of good. Let's rotate back one more. I think we need to shrink it one more time. Resize, shrink. Because we're getting fat here. And that actually looks good except for the sides are fat. So um, if we notice, I'm going to come back over here. Design open. And I'm going to open that design again. And because how these spikes go, if I try to rotate, because I want I, mean, I want this to be perpendicular or up, up straight up and down, I, there's no way that I can hit the 45 rotate. So rotate, if I hit 45, it just goes basically the opposite way it's looking. But over in my box, I can rotate this, let's say um, 15 degrees, because that would be, let's see, 90, 90. Let's try 15, I'm gonna hit 15. Not right, so I'm gonna hit reset. Maybe 20, let's see what 20, if 20 puts it. Almost reset, what about 25? It's 2250. How funny. There we are, it's perfectly up and down there. Is that, oh yeah, that makes sense, that's half of 45. <laughs> I'm dumb. Um, so if I rotate this, so I'm going to I'm gonna pick this design. It's going to get out of whack in a second, but that's fine. I'm going to reset this to 2250. And I'm going to go to resize. I'm turning my lock off because if we, it was going out, it was just a little too fat. I'm going to turn off my lock and, sh and shrink my width. So I'm just making it thinner. It's still the same length. Now I'm going to turn my lock back on come back to uh, rotate, reset my rotate, and then rotate it the correct way. And like I said, we're gonna have to come in and uh, drag and drop it again. But now, it fits. There we are. And now it fits, kind of. There we go. Um, I could probably, can I? rotate this point oh I think I usually can I rotate a point one? Oh, there we go I want a point one now we fit in there now it's good so we're going to the next one I'm gonna hit drop really important we've all been there here's my next one um, most likely I'm gonna have to rotate or I'm, I'm gonna have to rotate all these remember that's what I said this is custom quilting this is what you do this is why you get paid a lot to do these um, I think they're all going to be a little bit fat. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start off by changing, going to 22.5, reset, 22.5, why is this 
this one not working? I didn't baseline it. Oh, these are, okay, so I'm gonna um, actually delete these. What's happening is I duplicated it from this, um, from the angled piece, from this angled piece, um, and I don't really wanna do math, but I think it's what, 20, 45, 55, 65, 70.5. Look at me, I did math. Um, resize, turn my lock off, just shrink my width. And I'm just gonna shrink the width two on all of these. And rotate. Resize. Rotate. Someone asked me one time, like, oh, I have to go in, I have to hit buttons and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, that's called custom quilting. Sometimes we have to do that. Rotate clear. And there we go. Reset in here. Reset in here. Okay, so now let's zoom in. And now let's get this baby set. Drag. I'm sure we still have to resize this because we had shrunk the other one a few times. Drag and drop. Oh, oh. There we have it. We'll go back a little bit. I don't know why I'm moving the machine and just not using nudge. Oh, we're a little bit off there. Let me see. I don't know. Yep, we're in. We're in like Flynn. Okay, so here we have one. I'm just gonna resize this down twice. Oh, but yeah, the lock is on. Uh, because we've had to do it with all the other ones. So that's something you start learning like, okay, well I had to do this and I had to do that. And you can get everything kind of ready. Did that one fit? Oh, I have to rotate it a little bit. I sure hope you all decide like, you know what, that looked like it was hard and I'm gonna try it anyway. Or why did I make this video? I'm just kidding. Um, I think that one will work. Let's see this one. Size it one time. I got really quiet because I'm thinking. That's good. If I rotate it just a tad. Oh my gosh. I think it's going to work. I'm a little bit close here. Um, that's going to be fine. So I'm going to check those points really quick. And that's how I did it last time. I'm going to move my crosshairs up to this corner. And I'll zoom in. And I can, oh, I zoomed in. It's not even to the pink marks. You see that? So, hey, 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 we're ready to go. Hey, 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 we're ready to play. So, um, we have the color, the one orange color, so I only, I'm gonna close this one because we don't need that. Um, I need this design and that design. So I'm gonna touch this one down here in the middle button that select multiple. I'm gonna touch it and you'll see it turns green. That means it's on. I'm gonna touch this one. And then very important, turn that off so you don't touch something on accident. Now I'm only gonna stitch those two when I tell Pro Stitcher to stitch. Let me move you over here. And I'm going to stitch this out and I'll be right back. I'm going to stitch this out and change my thread color and then I'll see you back here in a second. Actually, I'm going to stitch this out, change my top thread color, select these two. Can you see what I'm doing? Um, let me turn it out. All right, so I'm going to stitch this out, change my thread color, select these two by doing the same thing that I did and then also stitch these two out and then we'll see you back here.
All right, so there you have what I can do in the first pass. I'm gonna have to advance up and do my other um, three diamonds and my two petals, and then come down and do these two um, petals and this diamond. And then the center is gonna be done. Um, I've already shown you how to line these all up, so I'm gonna go and do this, and I'll see you when it's done. All right, everyone, so we are done. I finished stitching this out. I'll put a picture here. Um, and now it's off to the purple. I already know that this video is kind of long because we had to go through placement of all these pieces. So I'm just going to jump in. We're going to do another video and we're going to do the final video is going to do all the purple. So um, we'll place all of the negative space uh, blocks like behind the star. I mean, honestly, if you were like, oh, no, I like the way it looks now. You don't really have to stitch that negative space. It's a wall hanging. It's not going to be washed and all that stuff a ton. So having this much negative space open and puffy is probably going to be fine. Um, but we're going to go in, we're going to stitch the, uh, or set all our designs in the negative space. I believe because I have the infinity and I have the extra throw space, I believe I'm going to be able to do, set it up half and then, um, do the other half. So that's, that's exciting for me. But, um, we're also going to set up these borders. And, um, like I said, they're kind of, we're gonna we're gonna call it chunking. It's not really chunking. Well, it is chunking, but it's not because I didn't have to go and do all of like the math for it. I just open the design and stick it there. I know that I need two, and that's it. So um, in the next video, we will do all of that. Uh, as always, thank you for joining me. I give me a, a like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Don't forget to follow me on social media. Adam so fun with the S E W. S-E-W on Facebook and Instagram where you see a lot of other stuff and you already see this quilt if you if you follow me and So we will see you in the next video at the end of the day. It's just quilting. Have a good time and we'll see ya. Bye everyone